Hi there, so we're pretty close to our end of our proof on the central limit theorem, and this is the sort of expression which we got for our standardized sample mean at the end of the last video. Okay, so the numerator of this we can actually combine in terms of a single summation. That's just equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu, when I'm summing over the mu now as well, because if I sum over mu sort of n times, I'm just going to get n mu, which is what we had before, so that's all okay. And then we're dividing that through by root n times sigma. Well, this root n times sigma is completely without an index of summation, so we can just write this out as being contained within our summation sign, the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu, all divided by root n times sigma. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to write this out as the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi divided by root n. And I'm going to explain why I've done that in a moment. Essentially, by the way I've defined yi here, it's equal to xi minus mu all divided by sigma. And if we sort of think about the properties of yi, we know that yi has an expected value equal to 0 because I sort of, when I take the expectations of the right hand side, I get the expected value of xi, which is just mu minus mu, which is zero. And the sigma doesn't really matter for that part. And then the variance of yi is just defined as being equal to, well, the, the variance of the top is just going to be the variance of xi because mu is just a constant, it doesn't have any variance. But I've got to multiply that by 1 over sigma squared because of the fact that the variance of a, a random variable times a constant is equal to that constant squared times the variance of the random variable. And we know that the variance of an individual xi is just sigma squared, so the top is actually sigma squared, which cancels with the bottom. So I've actually got a random variable yi, which has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. So I've defined a standardized sample mean, which is defined in terms of a sum of these yi, where each individual yi has a mean of zero and a variance of one. Uh, the only difference being that I've got this sort of root n factor here on the bottom. And this is quite important because do you remember in our sort of first video on the proof of the central limit theorem, we actually talked about the characteristic function of a random variable y as if the random variable y happens to have a mean of 0 and a variance of 1, then it turns out the characteristic function is defined as being equal to 1 minus t squared over 2 plus some other terms which are of order t squared. So because we've now sort of wrangled our sample mean into this sort of form involving y, we're going to be able to use this form of the characteristic function which we found in the first video. Okay, in the next video, I promise we're actually going to finish proving the central limit theorem. So I hope to see you then.